Welcome back everyone, Oz here, and today I've got another round of boomers being fools for you all. Another fun name for this one is basically just entitled boomers, which that's what this is. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video, and I uh, hope to hear from you all in the comments to get your opinions and thoughts on everything. Don't forget if you drink gamer subs, use code IZ at checkout. This one's brought to us by BriefBend8605. My boomer dad is pissed that I won't give him my baby's social security number. Boomer freak out. That's right, my dad thinks I should just give him my kid's social security number like it's no big deal. He wants to start a bank account for my little guy. Sounds harmless, but my parents suck at taking care of their finances. They've been bankrupt at least once and bailed out every few years but my grandparents while they were still living. When I moved out at 20, I found out they had overdue utility bills in my name so I couldn't open up any accounts for my first apartment until I paid it off for them. They took money from me as a minor while I was working at my first job and emptied $1,500 from my savings account, never paid it back to this day. I don't trust them at all. Parents have been hounding my hubby and I for weeks, if not months, and we've been politely dodging it. My parents started getting pissy. I politely told my dad and parents that baby already has a savings account and they can contribute to that if they'd like. Boy, did they flip the fuck out. Demands baby's social security number and starts calling us names. I flat out say no at this point. I tell them they didn't need a social security number to open a savings account in which baby is beneficiary. They counter that they do. They then proceed to tell me that my baby won't receive any money from them until they get it. Don't care. Pretty sure they don't have shit anyways besides the inheritance money after my grandparents died that they are quite literally smoking through. My dad even had my grandpa change his will less than six months before his death and showing signs of dementia. My grandpa right before he died, asked me what my dad made him sign and showed me the new will, asking me to translate it. It was leaving us, the grandkids, out and dad was the sole proprietor, the executor and power of attorney. Everything was changed. No point in contesting it. Hubby and I wanted to cut ties and move far, far away anyhow. We could not care less over 10 or 15K. Just more ways they abused money in positions of power. I called one of the top five nationwide banks in the US and they say you don't. In regards to requiring the baby's social security number, they tried to corner my husband behind my back and he didn't budge either. The anger continues. Snide comments at every holiday so far and baby's birthday is coming up. I don't care. My idiot brother dolled out his kid's social security number without consent from his wife or even thinking about it. My parents say, I don't trust them. Yeah, no shit. Someone with good intentions doesn't get this angry. Edit? Wow, I was not expecting this much traction on my boomer dad vent. Thank you for the comment, support, and overall encouragement to stay strong and tell them to fuck off. Reading many of your stories and how so many of you can relate or have credit ruined by family has certainly cemented my plans to protect my kids' social security numbers at all costs. I'm sorry for those that have been permanently affected by identity and financial fraud by a close family member. I can't reply to all of you, but my heart and sympathies are in your corner. Fuck those assholes for what they have done to you guys. For those wondering why I still have contact with my family, it is very limited contact, almost no contact to be honest. We don't live that close and they don't have active roles in our lives. We see them maybe six times a year at large family functions and holidays that are unavoidable. There are plenty of buffers and they typically behave around extended family. For those questioning me on my lack of spine, dealing with a narcissist is like talking to a brick wall. I have been no contact before and I have stated we would do it again no problem. I have a spine. I did say no. I was politely blowing them off and changing the subject hoping they would get the fucking hint so I could avoid the impending drama. Once they became aggressive with us, I did tell them we don't trust them. Sorry I did not detail that enough apparently. They don't have the SSN nor will they ever. They can bring it up all they want. I don't give a fuck. We barely see them and this keeps them in an at bay zone that we can control. If we cut them out completely, they would go nuts. Try and go for grandparents' rights and all that kind of other bullshit drama that I don't want to fucking deal with, while also dragging our whole extended family in as well. Keeping them on a carrot and stick relationship and letting them think they have any control when they don't works for us. As for my nephew, he is a few months older than my kiddo, born in the same year. I have discussed my concerns and that's all I can do. It is their choice what to do next. I hope they freeze and monitor. My kid's SSN has been safely tucked away since it came in the mail and not available at all. I will lock his number until he's 18 after we set up a Roth and a 529 we have already planned. Thank you for all the support and I bid you good night. This is actually a really good one to have here because if you're a parent and your parents are asking for your child's social security number, 
do not under any circumstance give it to anyone else because thing is is anyone who has that child's social security number can open up accounts and other just random bullshit in it even though they're an infant they can pretty much put mountains upon mountains of credit debt on an infant and leave it with them to deal with it's a pretty fucked up way of doing it but it's a really common form of financial abuse within families keep your credit on lock and do not let other people use you for your credit even if they claim to have the best of intentions Trolling for funsies. All of my boomer neighbors assume I do nothing since I work from home. Boomer story. I recently moved into a new neighborhood, and the neighbors on three sides are retired and of boomer age. They are generally nice people and helpful, but also incredibly presumptuous and assuming. The one commonality between all of them is that they assume that, since I work from home, I do literally nothing all day. One of them frequently cracks jokes about how I'm able to do whatever I want during my workday, the other day, he called to ask a question, and I happened to be able to shift my schedule to work later in the day so I could chat for 30 minutes. Note, I ended up working late because of this, and of course, now he assumes that since I can chat for 30 minutes whenever I want, that I just don't do anything at all during my workday. The same neighbor also always talks about how the guy who lived here before us was constantly working around the yard, and they don't see me outside nearly as often. Well, newsflash boomers. I'm working two jobs, my wife works an additional job, and I'm trying to take on a third side project. We effectively work four jobs between two people, while raising three teenagers. The folks who lived here before us? Retired guy and his wife, who never had a job. Hmm. I wonder why they had the time to just wander around the yard all day. Every day, for that matter. Another neighbor calls me yesterday to tell me something, and he first asks if he woke me up. It's 9 a.m. I tell him that I've been up and working since around 5.15 a.m. and he quickly changes the topic. The same neighbor also assumed that we were rich kids from out of state and had our house gifted to us when, in reality, we spent almost 20 years in a shoebox on the other side of town saving up to be able to move to our dream home. But you know, kids are lazy and entitled and don't want to work these days. Where we lived before, we were mostly in a low-income housing neighborhood with other folks around our age, so we never really encountered this, but these retired boomers, man. Every assumption they make about us is just wrong. Most of my neighbors are thankfully Gen X, which makes it a lot easier and they kind of understand the concept of working from home. I do have one boomer neighbor, but thankfully I assume the other people around us have already had the conversation. But um, because my work schedule is hell and because now I'm running two channels, recently I've been working nearly uh, 10 to 14 hours a day. And I do wonder what my neighbors think. Um, seeing the lights on at midnight and then off during the day because I'm currently a full night owl. Hell, to uh, really think about it, they don't really see me at all, so they probably just think I'm some kind of antisocial hermit. Big boo and on. Boomer mother-in-law posted a Facebook status about my husband, blocking him from seeing it. But not me, his wife. So I showed him. Social media. Mother-in-law posted a dramatic status about how her son never texts her and how she just has to accept this sad reality. At the end of her status, she put a, don't worry, he can't see this post. And a bunch of other boomer friends were commiserating with her, saying they're praying for her or offered her bad advice. Ah, come on, you can't just tease the bad advice and not give me what it is. And of course, she neglected to hide the status from her daughter-in-law, me. So I screenshotted it and immediately sent it to him. For any lurking boomer parents, if your adult kids don't want to talk to you, it's almost certainly your fault. There are expectations, but if they don't like you and you can't for the life of you figure out why, then it's definitely your fault. You have a blind spot, and causing a whole scene over not being liked makes it worse. Edit! More context for all the triggered parents in the comments. He talks to her about once a week, and a mere few days before she posted this, he had invited her to get lunch with him, and she gave a wishy-washy no. He just doesn't text her back every time and he doesn't answer spontaneous phone calls, hence her post. So I shared the post with him because his mom thought she could get away with trashing him on Facebook without him knowing about it. Man, <laughs> that's not right. Also, if you are a boomer parent and you're wondering why your child never texts you, just ask them before ranting like this because uh, I'm going to be honest, because of my work schedule and the fact that I exist only at night, my parents sometimes don't hear from me for a couple weeks. So that's, that, that is 100% on me. But my dad every now and then just texts to make sure I'm okay. And then I give him a call. We talk for like an hour or two. And then I go on <laughs> with my day. But sometimes it just, 
genuinely is the fact that they're just busy and um, bad with time and don't realize how many weeks have passed since the last time they talked with you. Just give them a text, ask if there's a time you can call, and during that call, just check in with them and make sure everything's good. I guarantee you they're not <laughs> most of the time. They're probably not purposely avoiding you. Unless, of course, you are the kind of pair to then go on Facebook and just start bashing them for, you know, that. <laughs> then, then, then perhaps there is more to it. This one's brought to us by whatever the hell this username is. <laughs> I finally found the reason why boomers hate texting. Boomer story. My dad and I were making plans to do something for my sister's graduation. I texted him where we can sit down and discuss the specifics later that evening, and I will be at his house after work around 6. Between 4.30 and 5.30, I received five calls every 10 minutes or so, asking why I made a commitment to meet at 4 and never showed up and to not bother showing up anymore and that he would do all the planning himself. I finally showed up to his house at 6 o'clock and showed him the text messages which he replied okay to that we agreed to 6. His response? This is why I hate texting. When everything is clear and documented, there's no point in trying to argue who's wrong or who's right. I told him that with the truth being documented that there is no point in arguing because it's evidently clear who is right and who is wrong. He uh, responded with telling me to get out of his face and go home. As a personal recommendation to those of you who have parents or older parents, every time you have a phone call where you make plans with them, make sure you text them afterwards. A list, almost like an itinerary basically, of any plans that you made and what the plans are so they can't pull a good old switcheroo and guilt trip you or gaslight you into believing something else was discussed. This one's brought to us by Derek the Cat Guy. You're five minutes early? How dare you? Boomer story. This happened a few years ago when I was a driver for a national pizza chain. This woman calls around 2.30 p.m. She explains to the manager she's having a Bible study at her house at 3.30 and wants a pizza exactly at that time. My manager explains that we can't guarantee exact times, but we can be there within a 10-minute window on either side. The woman supposedly agrees, and we take the order. Now, it turns out she's not actually in our delivery area, but slightly outside. Normally, we would have said no, but she was a little old lady without a car and we were slow, so the manager asked if I would do it. I looked up the address, saw it was only a quarter mile out of the area, so I said okay. If anything, the tip would cover the gas. So we take the order. The manager explains the 3.30 situation and we agree we'll make the order. Literally one large thin pizza, double cut, which should have been a red flag for me. At 3. So it'll be ready around 3.10 and I'll be at the house around 3.25, 3.30. Perfect. Everything works out great. No traffic. Every light is green. And I get to the door right at 325. Then this 60-something-year-old blue-haired bitty opens the door and scowls at me. Hello, ma'am. I have your pizza right here. Why are you here? Me looks at delivery slip to ensure I have the right address. I apologize, ma'am. Is this not the address? It is, but you're supposed to be here at 330. Why are you here? I smile and explain the 10 minute window and how I tried to be as close to 3.30 as possible. She goes on a tirade about how she has to reheat the pizza because I'm so early and this is the worst customer service she's ever experienced. At this point, I apologize and ask if she would still like the pizza. She harumphs, grabs the exact change from the hall table, hands it to me with a scowl that would shame the devil and I give her the pizza. When I get back to the store, the manager is hanging up the phone. The customer called back to the store right after I left and Read the manager about large rude driver, i.e. me, who arrived too early and so the pizza was cold when her guests arrived for Bible study, who were pulling up as I left. When the manager refused to give her credit and informed her she was not to be delivered to again for apparently calling me rude names over the phone and bragging about not tipping, the woman got irate, demanding corporate's number. At this point, my manager was fed up and told her to look it up on the website herself. So, moral of the story, even if you go out of your way, do a favor for, and offer prompt service for boomers, they will still complain. And they won't tip. One thing that always gets me about these videos is, like, there's a common thread about just people being in the boomer age range just being entitled assholes. And every time I make one of these videos, I always get one person who's like, you're being ageist with this video! And it's like, ah, are you the same kind of people who just constantly rag on our generation nonstop at the moment we bite back even just a little bit? You go on a tirade about us being ageist? Is that what it is? And to think they call us the snowflakes. Not a smurf. Hey, I, I promise. Probably the greatest reaction to an entitled boomer I've seen in years. Boomer story. 
I was at Kroger yesterday buying groceries. There were only two checkout lanes open and it was around 5 p.m. ish, so the afternoon rush was in full swing. Both lines were about 8 to 10 people long. I was in line for one checkout lane and some mid-30s guy was in the checkout lane next to me. He was the last one in his line. I was the second to last in my line. A woman got in line behind him, who looked to be about 70. You know, sometimes when you meet someone, you just get a sense that they're kind of an asshole. Yeah, she was one of those types. She pushed her card up behind him, made a few comments that we all ignored about not having enough open registers and we'll be here all day at this rate. Some time passes and we're all shuffling forward as the line moves up. The guy who's in front of the older woman is now next in line for his lane once the person in front of him finishes. Then, she started her bullshit. I hear the woman say to the man, Excuse me, I'm in a big hurry. Would it be alright if I just went in front of you? While she was saying this, she moved her cart up alongside his, grabbed the front of his cart, and began to push his cart out of the way so she could get in front of him. The guy looks at her without saying anything, grabs the handle of his cart so that she can't push it any further to the side, and takes a step forward so the front half of his cart is now between the two drink coolers on the other side of the lane so her cart can't fit alongside his. He then goes back to looking straight ahead without saying a word. The woman began to boom her. She started loudly demanding that he let her go in front of him because she has more stuff and has to get it home. Starts complaining that he's disrespectful and tells him, It's ladies first, but please go right ahead, and so on and so on. She had the attitude of a woman who had rarely, if ever, been told no in her life and was handling it about as well as you'd expect. The guy, once again, didn't respond. Instead, he reached into his pocket, pulled out his AirPod case, and put both of his AirPods into his ears. Then he took out his phone and, very slowly and deliberately, slid the volume bar on his screen to the maximum. Then he went back to staring straight ahead without saying a word. The boomer bitched at him for another minute or two until she finally noticed that he couldn't hear her. Then went back to snarkily making comments at his back while the guy's stuff was rung up. The guy paid for his stuff and left without ever glancing at her. She was absolutely seething the entire time. That guy was my hero. Never even tried to argue with her, just shut her down and went about his day. I never would have thought that ignoring them was an option, but this changes everything. Now, normally I'm more a fan of just returning the energy back to them or just simply using their logic and cranking it up a couple notches so they realize their own inconsistencies, but this, this is... This is fun. Ryan Ching, 25. Boomer mother-in-law demands I don't go out to eat so we can save for her retirement. Boomer story. My boomer mother-in-law, female 59, is always complaining that I need to save money. At the first few years of my relationship with my wife, I thought she was just trying to look out for me. But recently, she let it slip at the dinner table today. My father-in-law burned the chicken drumsticks on the grill to the point where they weren't edible. When I suggested getting pizza from Little Caesars or Domino's, she slipped and said, No, Brian, save your money. We have no 401k and you need to save. My mother-in-law married my father-in-law not because of his looks, he is obese, but he makes six figures, so I guess that was her draw to him. However, he admitted to me that he hadn't saved shit for retirement and he still owed a lot of back child support from a prior marriage. Their plan was originally to retire in Argentina, where they are originally from. However, inflation there is wild and quality of living is going down, unfortunately. So, now their plan is to live off of me, I guess. Fuck my life. It has been a long time since I've seen an FML conclude a post. <laughs> But I don't blame him in the slightest, because that is, that is not fun at all to find out the reason why your parents-in-law are essentially so gun-ho on you saving money is not for yourself or your future, but for their future. Now, in full honesty, I want to be in the position in life where I can support my parents in their retirement and help them with their future. But what gets me is the entitlement behind it, the belief that because they did not save during their life something that they pushed their own children to do, that they should be entitled to the earnings and savings of, well, I mean, in this case, their son-in-law. This one's brought to us by Empty Ambition 9050. Boomer dad can't figure out why I don't just buy a home. Boomer story. I showed him my income and we did the math. After rent, car, groceries, and insurance, I have zero dollars left over. You should get a second job. I already have two. You're a fool for paying rent. Just buy a house. Okay, 
I think this is where we started, Dad. Then he goes into, Right out of college, I was struggling, so I got an apartment for 150 a month, but I only made 800 a month. So your rent was one-fifth your income. That would be like me finding an apartment for $500. Well, rent is a lot cheaper than that, so you should be fine. I showed him the exact apartment he had for 150 which is now 2400 You need to get another job. I told you. I have two. And you should get a good union job at a factory like I did. Work hard. Those don't exist anymore. Actually, they don't exist anymore because of your generation. If you want a depressing rabbit hole to go down, just Google the wealth gap between boomers in any generation before and after them. The boomer generation had the peak of finances, and for some reason, after their generation, the quality of standard of living has consistently been decreasing when it comes to the average income and wealth that their children have. And it's not because there's a generational plague of laziness. Millennials have the highest education of any generation. Gen Z we're still missing data on because some of them are still in primary education. But millennials, highest education. Yet the average millennial earner earns 25 to 30% less than their boomer parents did at the same age. And this is with adjustment for inflation. This one's brought to us by LeFu10, or is it LaFu10? Boomer's angry, I gave them good news, a boomer's story. This happened a couple of years ago, but I'm still confused by it. My parents and their siblings, all boomers, went nuts with MAGA and Fox News. They also got my grandma into it. My mom was staying with my grandma when someone told them that Antifa was going door to door killing rich people. Obviously, they believed it and were hiding in the house and trying to find weapons. They kept sending messages about how scared they were. This didn't sound real, so I went online and checked it out. Apparently, a neo-Nazi group had posted this to scare people, so I did the reasonable thing and contacted them with proof that it was a hoax, so they could stop being afraid. A few minutes later, I get a call from my father who was furious. He yelled at me for not being supportive of their feelings. My parents, aunts, and uncles all stopped talking to me for months over this. Apparently, I was supposed to feed in their delusion. Who in the world gets angry when you try to take away their fears? I've started to get the feeling that people just enjoy being scared and afraid of something and, you know, get angry when they find out that they no longer have something to be scared and afraid of. Like, when you think of how insane this is, it really boils down to how dare you not tell your grandmother that Antifa isn't gonna kill her. That's what that comes down to. It's insane. It's like they thrive off of just anger, hatred, and fear. Don't forget this is brought to you by Gamersubs, and in fact, Gamersubs is actually launching a new flavor today, strawberries and cream. It's a limited time offer from what I understand, so uh, use code eyes at checkout for 10% off at this flavor that I'm really excited for, honestly. I've got mine already in the mail. Also, don't forget, it's only $40 with 10% off at code eyes for $36. For a hundred servings of caffeine. It's pretty good, and considering the fact that you really only need to have the servings and you can use two scoops and 32 ounces for a really good mix, this stuff lasts for a while. I still have flavors that I've been using since January. It's good, all right? Trust me, I love this stuff, genuinely. Go to Isaac Checkout. Also, that cream is pretty fucking sus, not gonna lie. I love it. 